Oh great, it's time to review White Guilt, the video game. Just kidding. People who say that about this game are fucking idiots. What's up, everybody? My name is Barrett Courtney, and today I am here to review Mafia 3. Now, if the title wasn't obvious, this is the third Mafia game in the Mafia series, uh, published by 2K, developed by a couple of different 2K developers. Now, before I get into my thoughts about Mafia 3, I just wanted to say congratulations to Hangar 13. If you didn't know, Hangar 13, new developer. This is their very first game that they have uh, put out into the public, and that's always a hard thing to do whenever you're a creative person in any sort of art or whatnot. Uh, so congratulations, Hangar 13, on your first baby going out there into the world. Now, before I get into it, I just want to say that this video is going to be more uh, impression slash review. The game just came out last night. I haven't been able to beat the entire game, so this isn't full, like, full reviewing the entire game. It's just I've been able to play as much as I could. I stayed up all night, played eight hours, so these are, this is sort of my review of my first eight hours with Mafia 3. Now, I'm going to give a little synopsis on Mafia 3, just in case you didn't know what the game is about. If you want to go into it completely blind, I recommend just shutting it off here. I'm not going to go into, like, full spoilers. I just want to give a quick synopsis, right? So, Mafia 3 follows Lincoln Clay, uh, half black, half possibly a Italian guy, they allude to it in the first couple hours of the game, and he is returning from the Vietnam War to New Bordeaux, which is a fictionalized version of New Orleans, to rejoin with his adopted family, which are heavily involved in the black mob. Now, Lincoln soon finds out that his adopted family owes a lot of money to the Italian mafia that runs in New Bordeaux, and things go south, the Italian mafia kills his adopted family, and this entire game is about getting revenge on the Italian mafia so you play as Lincoln trying to gather resources to t not just kill the mafia but just sh just take everything away from them and then kill them basically now after playing about eight hours straight of this game I can say I really really enjoy it it nails down the setting New Orleans this fictionalized New Orleans is really really well done in in late 60s where there's a lot of racial tension and you see that a lot in the world while you're traveling around trying to take out the mob right or mafia I should say and the tone of it is very grounded in a way of the the story right if you don't know it the way they're telling the story in the game is like a documentary it's like you're watching a documentary it opens up with like uh, shots of New Orleans and people being interviewed who knew Lincoln and it's sort of like building up like what happened uh, in 1968 when the Italian mafia was basically destroyed by this one man like what the fuck happened so it's this really cool like documentary style story and i fucking dig that that's not really done in video games and i think it fits perfectly well for a story in the 60s right the the 60s are never really explored in video games right and you know in real life in the real world the 60s uh, a lot of documentaries come out of the 60s i feel like the 60s is probably the most documented uh decade ever so it's really fitting that you know a, a video game about the 60s let's you know try to do this documentary sort of style of storytelling i think it's really fucking cool and it sets the pace of the story well and and they set up the characters really well like they really make you fall in love with lincoln in the first couple hours and they do it really well so it's even more devastating when he loses everything and you makes you understand like why he is going full force at the Italian Mafia. And even a lot of the supporting characters are drawn out really well and make you empathize even in the first couple of seconds of meeting them, right? I don't want to give too, away too much, but there's a moment where you take down a, another uh, mob uh, head guy and a woman comes out of like the secret compartment and she's yelling about like, he's been beating me and he's been raping me and whatnot. And Lincoln's like, it's okay, it's over. And sh she pauses for a second and she says, 
it's not over. And that's really, really well done. The first couple seconds of meeting this character, off the bat, you empathize with her because it isn't over, you know? Like, rape victims, you know, that, that shit goes on with them, and that's a very real thing. And there's a lot of moments like that that Hangar 13 does so fucking well. And not just side characters, but New Bordeaux as a whole, as a living beast, right? You, you really feel like you're being brought back to that that time, that era, especially when you're driving around and you're listening to the radio and uh, the fucking, the doors start playing and uh, the Rolling Stones start playing and Jefferson Airplane starts playing. Like, they really know how to transport you back into that era and they I think they nailed the the setting the tone and the story really 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 well now let's get into some of the struggles uh, the game has the the first thing I want to say is that this is an open world game and so open world I did not expect it to be so Ubisoft open world of hey here are these different sections of the map and you got to go into each section and take down do little missions to take down the bad guys in that section it's very Far Cry, very Assassin's Creed syndicate of like open world taking over a map sort of thing. And I think the main problem that Mafia 3 has is the great story and the pacing of the story and the gameplay of like an open world Ubisoft open world uh, game mash don't mash together really well because the documentary storytelling in a video game is really, really cool, and in the first couple hours, it's like beat after beat after beat after beat, but after those first two and a half hours, the game finally opens you up to sort of let you know, okay, this is going to be the rest of the game, we're going to take down the map, and it starts to get weirdly paced at that point, where I want more of the, the, the intenseness, uh, I want more beat after beat after beat, but then the game tells me, no, you gotta do these things first. You gotta do them first. And it's a little frustrating in a way. And let's talk about the core gameplay itself. It's not bad, it's stuff we've seen before. It's really a combination of like Grand Theft Auto and like Assassin's Creed Syndicate specifically like mashed together. And again, it's not bad. It's just we've seen Grand Theft Auto 5. We've seen Assassin's Creed Syndicate. And even more of why this game reminds me a lot of Syndicate specifically is how you take down each location. It reminds me exactly of how Syndicate's uh, structure works. Of you go into these like random buildings and you take down all of these guys and you free like sex slaves or you burn drugs or whatnot. It's specifically very syndicate-like, which is I did not expect whatsoever. So again, it's it's not it's not bad. It's just it's a weird fit, and I think it hurts the pacing of the game a lot. I was thinking about this, you know, after in the middle of my eight-hour playthrough of this game, where I would have much rather have liked a more linear Mafia 3 at this point rather than this whole open world, let's take over the map like one inch at a time sort of thing. Because very much, the again, the first two and a half to three hours are very linear in a sense. And I thought they were really well done. It was really well paced. And it was really, really cool. And then you got to open up to fucking whatever. But I will give Mafia 3 the benefit of the doubt of <clears throat> when you take over an entire section, right? There's one, like, final boss guy you gotta you gotta beat for the, the final section. And the, the one final boss guy I beat for a, a map portion was really, really cool. You go through this, uh, again, not wanting to spoil too much, you go through this amusement park that's been shut down for a while, and it's very racist very 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 racist and it's it's fucking creepy and it's it's weird and there are cool little moments like that where it shows you the fucked up history of what america was like 50 fucking years ago and hangar 13 utilizes that just fucked up past of turning the tables against white racist people back in the 60s where the this one ride specifically at the end of this amusement park like it's supposed to be creepy and it's supposed to like haunt you because you know the black man is gonna get you but it's sort of creepy because it's like the guy on the speaker is fucking 
creepy he's all like southern and whatnot and then it just makes you realize like how fucking awful america was 50 years ago and i just uh and it, it makes me sad a little bit but hangar 13 nails those moments right so there are little moments still like that in the open world so that's why like the open world is okay i don't love it but it's okay but going back to the gameplay itself, uh, it's it's fine. The one thing I was really concerned about was uh, the driving mechanics, because every preview video that I saw of Mafia 3, like the car specifically, like taking turns and whatnot, I was like, oh, that looks very arcadey. That reminds me a lot of like Watch Dogs. And I was actually pleasantly surprised that it doesn't really feel like that. It does look really weird when you take turns, but when you're making them and you're breaking, it all sort of feels natural and makes sense in a way. And then and the gunplay, which is a big portion of it, right? You're going through the, the map and taking down these areas. You can either stealth as best as you can or eventually have a shootout uh, with people. And it's, it's fine. It's very, you can choose to have aim assist or not. So if, you, if you're really looking for a challenge, you can, you know, turn off the aim assist and really like try to prove how good you are at a third person shooter. So yeah, it doesn't, like, it. it's fine. Like, again, we've seen it before, right? And it, it's not bad, it's just, it's there, it exists. And that's the struggle I'm really having, because there are, like, so many great moments, and then there's, like, just so many things that sort of just exist in the game. And I think the best analogy I can think of right now is, like, let's say your favorite band comes out with uh, an album that has 20 songs on it and like 10 of the songs are like fucking awesome. And then the other 10 songs are sort of throwaway songs. And so the album as a whole isn't bad. There are like a lot of great tracks and they're fucking bangers, right? But then they're sort of mixed in with these okay songs. And then you can't help but think about, man, what if they just put an album out that was just those 10 songs. And I think that's what I'm struggling with with Mafia 3, where I'm thinking to myself, man, what if it just was a story-driven linear game and wasn't this forced open world? So I think that's the main takeaway from Mafia 3, is that the story is really, really fucking cool and really, really well done, but it has this forced open world element in, in it that just fucks up the pace of the game and the story so those are my general thoughts the next thing i want to do is answer some twitter questions i went on to twitter and said hey i'm recording this fucking review video ask me any question you want so we're going to answer a couple of twitter questions the first question comes from dame matt at damien Sor, who asks how much does the game rely on its story and that's a really good question because a lot of people's worries before this game came out was the gameplay. I don't feel like a lot of people were like, oh, the story's gonna suck, because I think that's what intrigued a lot of people was the story. So it's weird because when they highlight the story, it's so well done, but then they also take so much time to push you to do this open world, taking down the map sort of thing and it's like I want them to rely on the story more and they're not doing that almost uh, so it, it's like they were very confident in the in this open world the gameplay structure but it didn't ultimately work out I would say so I don't think it's more of like a relying upon I think they just thought that both the story and the gameplay were just gonna mess well together and I think they're it's just just disjointed at this point Next question we have is from Alyssa the Dino at Alyssa the Dino. How well does it capture the feel of the late 60s? How well do the soundtrack slash music choices work with the game plus era? Like I said before, it's done so fucking well. Again, like I cannot emphasize this enough of just driving around. The best parts of the game are just driving around in your car listening to music. It's so fucking cool. And I guess the one, the one strife I'm going to have with it, and this is a very nitpicky thing because 60s music is my shit is I'm, I'm driving around as Lincoln Clay in the si late 60s in New Bordeaux and no Bob Dylan comes on and no Beatles come on and I know it probably was a thing where like one Beatles song 
probably cost the same amount of the rest of the soundtrack. So I, I, I get that, but it's like a little like it's like a little nerdy fucking thing that I have where I'm like, oh man, I wish I was listening to Dylan right now. So that, I, I guess that's my one little strife with it. Uh, but I think the the music choices specifically are so fucking rad. Where I was listening to the soundtrack before they came came out a lot and. I was thinking about like, oh, how are they going to use these songs? And there are specific moments uh, where there are cutscenes and they use specific songs and I would not have expected them to do well in a more toned down, a little more serious uh, game like this, but they do really, really well. So generally, music fucking choice in this game. Now, the last question we have is from Andrew Taylor uh, at Papa Drew Bear, who asks, is it worth $60. Now, this is a, also a good question. If you treasure story in video games, much like I do, it's a great portion of why I play video games is the, the story in them. I would say, yeah, I think this is a really, really cool fucking story. And granted, I've only played eight hours of it and I've fucking bitched and moaned about the fucking open world and the story clashing, clashing heads. But, like, even when I'm in the open world and they go back to, like, the documentary cutscenes and whatnot, I'm, like, so intrigued and I think it's so fucking cool. So, yeah, I think if you love stories as much as I do in video games, I think this is worth your time and your money. And if that's something that you're not really interested in, I would say wait until it goes on sale and then check it out. I think this is a game everybody should check out just because of how different it is at least uh in theory to other video games about what the story is how they tell the story i think it's just so so cool so the question is it worth 60 dollars? i think it just sort of depends on your point of view of video games what you treasure more if you love story i think yes if you love gameplay and you don't really give a shit about story may maybe not but again that's not to say the gameplay is bad it's we've seen it before so if you're looking for a game that has gta 5 mechanics but just don't want to play gta 5 anymore then maybe maybe this is worth your time and your money as well so those were all the twitter questions and my general overall feelings of the game again i'm only eight hours in you might be wondering are you going to do a full review when you beat the game probably not if anything if i have anything more to add uh, to my thoughts right now, we'll probably make a talking shit topic about it. So if you if you don't know what that show is, you maybe subscribe down there and check out our other shows. Just fucking do it. So you may be wondering, Barrett, what score would you give Mafia Three? So this is my official score for Hangar 13's first developed game, Mafia Three. So yeah, I really, really enjoy it and, and value it because of how well the story is done. I think it's a good Game of the Year contender, but I don't think it will win Game of the Year for us here at BZG, like because it nails the, this one aspect down so well, so I just want to recognize that, right? It's very much like Mad Max last year, where Mad Max was not nearly a perfect game, but it did one thing so well that I wanted to recognize that, so that's sort of... You know, Mafia 3 is like the Mad Max this year, where it has like this one really cool aspect of it that I feel like everybody should at least check out. So those are my thoughts on Mafia 3. What are your thoughts? You can leave them in the comments below or tweet them at me at Chung so we can have an open dialogue about our thoughts and feelings, talk about why we agree on some things, why we disagree, and whatnot. Who fucking cares? It's Twitter. Whatever. So thank you guys so much for tuning in for my Mafia 3 impression review video thing. I hope to see you next time for my next video review, but until then, stay fucking nerdy.